And then this last piece we're going to talk about is just determining service selling price using time and materials approach. So a service selling price using a time and materials approach. How, how would we go about that? And the idea here is time and materials pricing is common for services. So I'm always talking about professional services because I did it for a long time. But we would want to, I, I set prices based on an hourly rate. So here's some ways that we can compute some of the pricing. We can compute the rate in dollar hours by, by hour. This includes all of the costs for overhead cost, uh, for overhead. We can also include materials markup. And then we can estimate total labor hours for a service and then complete the estimated total price. And so a good example here is an audit. So as a CPA, I used to do audits. Um, don't do them anymore, I'm more of a consultant now. Or we could talk about like implementing some kind of accounting policy. And so there's a revenue standard out called ASC 606. And this is exactly how I price it, um, implement policy. This is called a revenue, so a revenue standard. So a company might hire me and they say, okay, how much is this gonna cost? How much do you wanna charge me? And so first I'd figure out, okay, let's say there's three projects here, like write a policy, write policy, um, read contracts, a certain amount of contracts and uh, create presentations. And I'd assume that at the very least, each of these, let's say this takes me 100 hours, this takes me 200 hours, and this takes me 100 hours. And then I'd assume of how much does, would this cost? What's my cost? So this is hours, cost. And maybe I pay my employees $60,000 an hour. Uh, after all benefits, and I mean $60,000 a year, and they get benefits and everything of about 25% for their bonus. This plus uh, one times one point three five or one two five times this. So let's say their total cost is seventy five thousand, and I expect them to work two twenty eighty hours a year. So they cost me thirty six dollars an hour. So that's my cost per hour. And so. Let's go here to figure out what's my actual cost for the business. If I put dollar signs around this, it actually locks the formula. And so if this will cost me $14,000 to write to write the policy and do the work, just from a labor perspective. I also have to worry about any material. So let's say I have to pay for a license during this time, an Excel license. I also have depreciation. I also have rent expense that I allocate. Per, and I'll, maybe I allocate it per employee here. And so let's say my rent is $100,000 a year. Um, and I allocate it based on employee hours. I have one employee, so I'll, I'll build it in, him into the cost. So $48. And then this is here. Um, right, that's, this is a type of overhead. And depreciation, let's say I bought them a laptop, and then it's $100 for Excel licenses, or 10, let's say $10 a month. So I might just say $10 here, or $100, give it more accurate for all the different licenses. The depreciation of this laptop, let's say maybe $100 for the month. And then my rent is actually $48 an hour, so 48 times 400. So the total cost of this project for me, if I had rent and everything, it's actually about $50,000, right? And so total cost, the project is about $50,000. And then I say, well, as an owner, I have to manage this process, do all this other work. I wanna make at least a 30% margin. And so I'd say 1.3 times this total, oh, we can say total margin. Expected cost price is this times 1.3. Or you can even say this divided by this. Oh, oh. Fine. 
and then our then we figure out hours. So what is our cost charge per hour I have to charge? I have to, in this business, I'd have to charge $150 an hour or an hour or so in order to make the profit that I want to make, right? And so that's how I charge my hourly rate. And we can build that out, but that's all they're saying here is we compute the rate of dollars per hour. This includes our uh, my labor costs. Then my, any markup I have to include, including buying, selling, handling materials, the exact uh, profit margins, and then I'd estimate the number of hours it would take me to use and then compute the price I would charge for the particular service. So here I'd say, hey, if you want me to do this particular service, it's gonna cost you maybe $62,000, which is about a $157 hourly rate. And so that's when these rates sound really high from a profit perspective, it's actually relatively low when, uh, or relatively standard with 30% um, for most professional services. So I don't know what I'm gonna keep my cap here then. Okay, and they kind of go an example here, but I gave a more ex a more relevant example, I think, but this is their example for how they would go about it, um, which we can use. I'll do that as well, their example. This example, so they're saying here, we know direct labor is $40 a unit, non-material, Overhead, so that's probably your rent per unit. Total hourly conversion costs, so this is our hourly costs to the business, right? We want a 22% profit margin. Equals this times 0.22. And so what's the rate we have to charge? $61. And the material market, we also might be charging materials, maybe we're selling a, pr a product along with it. And so materials for purchasing handling uh, are 3%. And the profit margin is 22%. That will all be given to you. So we're expecting to make a 25% margin on our profit and materials. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll take the labor hours so they're saying this project would take 300 labor hours times the 61. Direct material cost is 14,000. That's given to us. Direct material cost. We want a markup on this of the 25%. And so, Ultimately, we're gonna have all three of these costs be our total cost. So that's that's a minimum. One zero too many. Let me write the zero. Correct. So that's that's how we went about. Uh, figuring out the pricing here would be, is more of an example of we're saying the labor, we're gonna incur the cost, but we're only gonna charge a profit uh, a markup on the materials. So that'd be an example if we're building something for a, a specialized product for a customer. Uh, common in software companies too, to build a customized software for a customer might be an example as well. So that's the end of this chapter. I want to open up to Q&A. I'll stop recording now. Uh, open up to Q&A.